we are going to start with the organic compound that is the detailed study of the organic compound that is the sulfuric acid right so first of all you should know that what is actually the formula of sulfuric acid so it is h2so4 right so sulfuric acid is indicated by the molecular formula that is h2so4 and when we just talk about its molecular mass when we just calculate the molecular mass it comes out to be 98 atomic mass unit right so it is the molecular mass of the sulfuric acid and you know that sulfuric acid is actually called as king of chemicals because uh, it is of great advantage uh, like uh, almost in all all the industries it is being used so it is called as the king of chemicals so if somebody ask you to just state the king of the chemicals so it should strike your mind that it is our sulfuric acid that is h2so4 now what is the structure actually of this h2so4 so when we just get to see the structure so it is like this in which s is bonding the form as i'm showing in the figure right so this is the structure of the sulfuric acid so that means in this the sulfur is just forming two coordinate bonds with the o and a single single covalent bond with oh and oh so this is actually the uh, this thing the formula for the sulfuric acid now see the we are just going to start with its preparation and before we start with the preparation you should know that there are many processes by which we can prepare the sulfuric acid but the most popular process which is being used uh, since 1831 that is the contact process it was uh, launched in 1831 right so it is the most popular uh, that is the most popular process for the production of the sulfuric acid so now we are going to start with the sulfuric uh, this thing the contact process that how the sulfuric acid is formed but before we start i just want that because there are as you can see in the figure there are so many tanks which are actually involved in the uh, this thing the production of the sulfuric acid so first of all you should know the general equations which are occurring place which are taking place so that you can just uh, put those equation and uh, it will be easy easy for you to remember that where these uh, chemical reactions are taking place in the different tanks so just i'm writing i'm just summing up the equations first then i'll explain you that what different tanks we are using and what uh, like which reactions taking place in which tank right so i'm just going to sum up the uh, this thing the reaction first so it is first reaction which is involved in the production of sulfuric acid is the S plus O2 that is the burning of sulfur that means sulfur is being burned that, and it is burned in presence of uh, the air in which the, the air is mostly composed of the oxygen gas so it forms sulfur dioxide then what happens this sulfur dioxide combines with more oxygen and uh, it is a reversible reaction and it take place in presence of catalyst vanadium pentaoxide right so this catalyst this actually catalyzes the reaction that means it makes the reaction happen without undergoing any change in itself so it combines so2 combines with o2 in presence of v2o5 giving rise to so3 then this sulfur trioxide which is formed in the second step we react it with the concentrated sulfuric acid as you all are familiar that what are concentrated acids concentrated acids are something that which contain the uh, this thing the higher proportion of the uh, salt content but the water content is too low right so we just reacted with the concentrated sulfuric acid and you know what we get we get h2s2o7 which is highly concentrated sulfuric acid called as oleum then this oleum is uh, this thing diluted with water and the water which will be using will be equal amount like the uh, water should be equal in amount with the oleum like if you have uh, a certain amount of oleum x suppose it is x so that x amount of water has to be added in order to dilute it and we get the dilute sulfuric acid so these are actually the reactions which are taking place in this right so what do we get to see first the burning of sulfur that is s plus o2 so2 and you should know that uh, we use only o2 right because if we as we know that air also contain the nitrogen so if we we'll use the air the, which uh, contains the nitrogen so it just uh, doesn't make the reaction happen as it just uh, make itself attach with the impurities so that is why only oxygen is taken in the air content that means the oxygen content is taken is too high and it is free from nitrogen and all 
so it just combines and form SO2 and now this SO2 which is formed is not pure right it contains certain impurities now what are the impurities which are present with this SO2 it is dust particles it is uh, arsenic oxide mainly these impurities are present with this SO2 so that means we need first we need to just purify this SO2 and after purifying this SO2 when it becomes free from this uh, dust and arsenic oxide it just reacts with the oxygen that means the more oxygen in presence of vanadium pentaoxide and it give rise to SO3 now the catalyst like what I am telling you is V2O5 that is vanadium pentaoxide instead of it we can also use the catalyst palladium right but we don't use palladium actually the reason behind is that palladium actually combines with this impurity arsenic oxide so it, uh, you can say it uh, the catalyst just gets poisoned so we need a catalyst we do not get poisoned poisoned and just increase the rate of reaction so in order to avoid that uh, condition we just use vanadium pentaoxide instead of using palladium right so instead uh, this thing in presence of vanadium pentaoxide it give rise to sulfur trioxide then the sulfur trioxide is mixed with concentrated sulfuric acid and it gives rise to the highly concentrated sulfuric acid that is H2S2O7 that is oleum. Now the reason is that you, the question must be striking in your mind that why I haven't mixed this SO2 with water directly. See SO2 when combines with water directly the reaction is highly exothermic and it just gives rise to explosion. So instead of adding, uh, adding SO2 directly into the water what I am doing I am just reacting it with the concentrated sulfuric acid and then we get oleum and then we mix this oleum with equal amount of water which give rise to the sulfuric acid. So as you have seen there are so many reactions which are actually involved in the process. So these reactions are occurring in a specific towers. So this is the figure see this is the apparatus which is used for the con uh, contact process. So we'll, I'll first, first of all you should know what are the names of the different tanks which are being used here in the contact process. So this, uh, this uh, A tank is actually a tank uh, in which the S plus O2 occur that means in which the sulphur is burnt that means air is blown into this tank and what do we get here we get S plus O2 forms SO2. Right. So here in uh, A chamber what we get is uh, SO2, there is no such name of the tank or you can say it is a pyrite burner that means in which the burning of sulphur is just taking place. Right. Now uh, this SO2 produced as I told you is not pure, it contains many impurities. The main impurities which are associated with this SO2 I told you is dust and arsenic oxide. So it has to be purified. Right. So uh, like uh, this dust and arsenic oxide is not purified. Uh, in one go we need to pass the sulfur dioxide from different tanks right so that means we have to do its purification so these all tanks starting from B to this is purification tank these all are purification tank in which we are separate like we are separating the dust we are separating separating the moisture we are uh, making SO2 free from the arsenic oxide so the first tank this one the B1 is called as dusting tower what is it called it is called as dusting tower so here what happens actually when the SO2 from A uh, tank is fed into the B tank then the stream of uh, steam is passed through it right so that means high uh, this thing this powerful steam is passed so what happens that steam just make the dust particles uh, settle at the bottom and this SO2 just get free from the many uh, dust particles not all the dust particles are separated but many or you can say many gets separated then after this this SO2 is fed from the B tank to the C tank right C tank is also uh, called as the washing tower or it is called as the scrubbing tower either term can be used so it can be called as a washing tower or it can be called as a scrubbing tower so when this SO2 passes from this B to C tower here what happens the stream of water is passed through it right that means the water is just flowing there is a heavy stream of water that then uh, what what is it uh, like what purpose it is doing for us 
this water actually wets the dust particles which are present with the SO2. Like in B, in the B tower, many uh, dust particles have been removed, but it is not all the, it is not free from all the dust particles. Still, it contains a few dust particles. So when it passes from this B to C, then what happens? The high stream of uh, this thing, the water makes the dust particles which are left uh, with the, still left with the SO2, it just make those dust particles wet. Then what happens when they just become wet? They settle down right and that means SO2 now become SO2 is now free from all dust particles it do not contain any dust then from C tower it is just fed into the this tank right this is called as the drying tower right so C tank is called as the drying uh, sorry the D1 is called as the drying tower so what what is the here what what is occurring in the d tower so the so2 which is traveling from the c to d is free from the impurities right but uh, still it contains the uh, this thing the you can say a moisture right so that needs to be uh, separated out right so that means it observe all the moisture and you know that in the b in the c tower as well the arsenic oxide gets separated but in case like in this figure there are only these tanks but uh, in many books you will get to see there will be one more tank here right so that is the arsenic purifier tank the tank is similar to the tank we are using in this h2so4 so what what is occurring in that like when when we pass from c to d all the moisture gets separated right now it is free from moisture it is free from the dust particles but it contains the arsenic oxide right so we just pass from the drying tower to the arsenic purifier where the arsenic oxide just gets separated and these all uh, like the uh, these tanks that is the one is this uh, dusting tower washing tower this drying tower and arsenic purifier they are just purifying the uh, this thing the so2 and they are just involved in the purification they are called as the purification units now now we have just got this so2 and it is free from all the impurities right so till uh, deep uh, tank uh, this thing this our so2 is now became the pure one now what we are doing we are feeding this so2 in this tower the e tower it is called as the contact tower right so that means this so2 is not now going to react with oxygen in presence of vanadium pentoxide and it will yield so3 so this reaction the second reaction is taking place in the e tank right so at the, the end what we are going to have in the e tower uh, e tower we are going to have sulfur trioxide then we are passing this sulfur trioxide into the another chamber that is called as absorbing tower the f1 is called as the absorbing tower so what happens in the absorbing tower actually here the stream of sulfuric acid is again passed and which sulfuric acid the concentrated one so what that concentrated sulfuric acid is doing it is just reacting with so3 to form the highly concentrated sulfuric acid that is the oleum right as i told you we cannot add so2 directly into the water because the reaction is highly exothermic which leads to the explosion right so we need a reaction to occur in a controlled manner so what we do we pass this so2 into the absorbing tower where it reacts with the concentrated sulfuric acid in in order to form the highly concentrated sulfuric acid that is the oleum H2S2O7. Then after this we are passing this H2S2O7 into the G tank. Right. What is this G tank? It is the dilution tower. Here we are mixing the uh, this thing the equal amount of water with the oleum and what we get as a result we get the this thing it is filled with our desired dilute sulfuric acid so i think it is clear so you should actually familiar with the reactions first and then you should familiar with the tanks which are involved again i am repeating the a tank is called a pyrite burner the b1 is the dusting tower the c1 is the scrubbing or the washing tower the d1 is the drying tower this is the contact tower absorbing tower and this is the dilution tank and here is a the, the beaker is shown in which we are getting a desired product that is the uh, our uh, this thing dilute sulfuric acid right so this is the contact process by which we can prepare the king of chemicals that is our sulfuric acid